Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is from the 20 Objects curriculum that Cycling74 has put together on their own website to help people uh, become more familiar with Max, MSP, and Jitter. This is lesson two, and we're still at very basic stuff. This is about number boxes. And what I have here in the first patch is an integer number box, you know, and I just type I to get that and uh, a print object beneath it that's labeled as patch number one so that when it prints stuff out over here in the max window you can tell what it is. Anyhow, I'm just going to type in a number here, four, and there you can see the print object labeled patch 01 has now uh, put out an object number four. One of the uh, cool things we learned about uh, inner, uh, number boxes is if you put the mouse in there and you drag up or down, it actually puts out a whole bunch of values, and so you see there they all are going up and down. All right, I'm going to clear that. Uh, the next one, patch number two, is about the order of flow here. If I type in a, you know, a six right here, you see that it prints the six because it goes down. It does not go back up. But if I type an eight up here, it flows all the way through. So things go downstream, not upstream. That's pretty easy. Um, also, if you type in a bang, let me put a 14 right here, I can get that number to print by just hitting this bang that feeds into it. That just causes it to repeat whatever it did. Okay, that's good. Okay, now we get to some tricky stuff here. Um, this one is the same thing, except I've made one difference. I've taken this second number here and I've changed its format. Let me put it back into edit mode and show you that. The display format here normally is decimal. I've changed it to hex, or hexadecimal, the, six, uh, the base 16 system. Uh, it's used a lot in programming. And it has an interesting effect. So let me show you, if I enter, you know, like a large number here, 242, what I get is, oh, and I need to turn the max inspector back on. What I get is the hex version of 242, that's F2. That these are the same number, just represented different ways. What's interesting about it, though, is that it feeds through to the print object, but the print object is still printing in decimal. And so even though it's, it's in hex right here, it's printing in decimal at this point. Okay, whoops. All right, our fifth patch just says that it's uh, the it's going to print the most recent number. So if I got a 1 here, you see that it prints the 1. If I got a 3 here, it prints the 3. If I put a 17 here, it prints that. So it, it doesn't have a memory really for what came before it. Okay, um, now what I'm doing is I've got a number here at the top and I'm feeding it through to make MIDI notes. and um, MIDI operates on a 7-bit uh, system that goes from 0 to 127. That's 128 choices total. And um, I actually have it set in what's sometimes called the scientific system, which means that uh, the middle C on a piano is, is written as C4, uh, because some programs use C3 for middle C and some use C5, but there is a standard of C4. And so, in fact, if I enter the MIDI code for middle C here, that's 60. You, you got a C4 right there. And you see how it's come through. Now, what I've done here is a couple of things. I'm going to put this in edit mode so you can see. Uh, let's start with this bottom one. You can see right here, I put it in MIDI C4 because there's also the regular MIDI where actually middle C is C3. That gets a little confusing, so we're doing C4. Um, but also because it only takes numbers between 0 and 127, I've uh, placed a limit on this upper one. That's just an integer box, but if you come down to here to the uh, the inspector, I've set the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 127. So for instance, if I come back to here and I drag it way up, you see I can't drag it higher than that. And similarly, if I drag it way down, I can't go lower than that. So. Uh, Good to have limits in this case. Okay. There we go. Um, this time we're starting to do a little bit of math. I'm using a, uh, a math operator here to add 10. So I'm just going to do 17. And then we get 27 as our, as our sum. Okay. 
that's good. Um, if you want to add two different numbers together, you can also ha you have a second port here. You see there's a second port here, but I'm not using it because I'm just adding 10 to everything. So if I can put my, you know, I can put a 12 there and it puts out 22. I can change the, the add end uh, here and I can change it, for instance, to, um, you know, 14. But when I hit type, it doesn't change anything. That's because this is a cold inlet. And it means it sets the value. Unfortunately, because this is the default, it doesn't change. It doesn't, you don't see a visible change. The 14 is in there now, but it doesn't do anything until I, for instance, type the 12 over again here. And now you see that it adds up to 26. Um, anyhow, so we have what's called a hot inlet, which triggers uh, an output, and a cold inlet, which does not trigger an output. All right, and then our next one is you can actually do all kinds of math at once. I've just taken the same one and I've expanded it to do addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. Now the division one gets a little tricky. I'm gonna type in my number here. I'll type in a 12. And if you come over here, you see for instance, it, it outputs stuff from right to left. Um, 12 divided by 10 is 1.2, that's correct. 12 times 10, okay, 12 minus 10, so on and so forth. But uh, the problem is this. If you, you'll you notice that this isn't an, an integer number, integer, 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 and then I have to put this little dot here. What I'm doing is I'm explicitly casting that variable as a floating point number. Um, because I need to be able to get decimals as outputs here. And this is an integer, 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 and this is a flow num object. Um, if you want to be able to get a floating point outlet, you have to have floating point input. And in fact, that's why this one up here has a dot, because this is a flow num also. So in order to get flow num output, everything that goes into it has to be a flow num floating point. And if anything is not, for instance, this one, these three are integers, you see that you get integer results. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's the source of programming massive head-banging headaches when you try to do division and you're you're getting integers and it's because you had an integer in there somewhere and so now you see for instance um, I've got numbers here Whoop. you see that when I just dragged up and it works fine um, what I've got right here is a second one a second flow number that I can use to change the argument in each of these. Um, what I've needed to do though is, you know, you can drag this one. It's a cold inlet, so it doesn't trigger the responses automatically. There we go. Um, but you'll notice what's happened here is that each of these things got truncated. Even though I have a 3.4 and a 1.29, because of this integer set up here, it's, it's truncated this to 3 and to 1. And um, so we've got 3 plus 1 and 3 minus 1 and 3 times 1. What's going on over here? This is the only one that treats all of them as floating points all the way through. And, oh, we must be at the end. Anyhow, that's uh, basic math. And this is part 1. I'm going to... Uh, pause the video for a moment and come back with another patch for part two. Okay, I'm back now with uh, a continuation of the 20 objects lesson. This is uh, my second patch uh, where I'm continuing a bunch of others. What I've got right over here is I've actually created a slider. And let me just make that. I've got a slider here and I've gone through the inspector and I've changed the range of the slider. By default it's 7-bit. It goes from 0 to 127, which again is good for MIDI keyboards and music. Um, but let me show you what I've got right here. I've gone down here and I've changed the output minimum, so it's lowest value to 200. And you don't put the high, you don't put minimum and maximum, you put minimum and range. And I made a range of 301 because I wanted to be able to go from exactly 200 to exactly 500, which is 301 steps. And this says it just go one step at a time. And so uh, that's what I got right there. And I think you saw that I had a 352, but if I drag this up or down a little bit, oh, I gotta, gotta lock the patch. I get different numbers. Okay, so uh, that's a nice way to do it. 
Here is another one where I'm taking the uh, same thing. I've now restricted it to 0 to 10. So this one actually has, let me show you that. This one has an 11 point range. It starts at a value of 0 and it has a max, a range of 11 which gets it up to 10. And this one is just doing multiplication. Boop, boop. So there we got a bunch of numbers multiplied times 10. All right, um, now we're doing a flow num. We saw this in the 20 uh, concepts curriculum, but the neat thing about the flow num is depending on where you drag it, you get different things. If I drag on the on the, uh, on the the digit, I get, you know, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But if I move over, I can drag by tens or I can drag by hundreds or thousands or whatever, depending on the left, right position of the mouse. So that's a cool thing. Um, okay, this is about doing multiplication again, and what I've got here is the multiplicand, the first number, it's a flow num, and the product is also, but the multiplier in this case is an integer. So the multiplicand always gets truncated, and it gets displayed as an integer even though the decimal shows. So it's a little weird. So, you know, if I put in a 4 here, you see it gets multiplied times 10 and it displays as 40. But if I put in like a 4.1 here, because this is integer, it still gets truncated as to four and displayed as 40. So that's actually bad math. That's why you need to put a decimal place after this one to explicitly um, show what it, it needs to be, which is what I've done right here. In this version, I type a 4.1. And because I've now set the multiplier as a floating point by putting the dot in there, I get the correct answer. So that could be the source of a lot of headaches. I'm gonna clear this. Okay, um, now what I have is a slider that's going to do multiplication, but I've set the slider to float uh, float output. In fact, if I click on that and go to inspector, you see right here, all I had to do was take this one that says float output, and I checked it. And I have this one on a 0 to 10. So 0, and then up to add a range of 11 gets you to 10, because it includes the original point. So I can uh, scroll through this. Do, 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 do. And you see it, it putting out the output over here. Um, down here, um, I've got a more complicated thing. This is an example they had on the in the lesson. Is how to actually create a patch to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. I probably would use a spreadsheet to do this instead, but it's possible to do it here. I created a slider, gave it a range. I picked from minus 100 to uh, 300 above in Fahrenheit. And then what I do is display it as a floating point. So this is actually set as flow num because I need to be able to use decimals all the way through. And so let me just, again, I in the inspector, I had to check this one here that says floating output. I had to check that. This is a flow num. So that just tells me where the slider is here. And to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you subtract 32, you multiply times 5, and you divide by 9, and then you get Celsius. And so, for instance, you can see here, boop, I've got Celsius over here. So that's a nice little way of seeing what's happening. Um, here I'm using two trigger objects. And remember, in trigger, it goes from right to left. And you see the only difference here is that this, this one is an integer, and this one is a floating point, a flow num. Um, but I've had it set to have the first output be a flow num, the second one to be an integer, and the third one to be a bang. The T is for trigger. So if I type, for instance, you know, four over here, what's interesting is that it comes and it prints it as 4.00 as a flow num. It just adds a lot of zeros. The second one is an integer, and the third one's a bang, and so it doesn't matter what I put in there. If I put anything in, it's gonna come out as bang. On the other hand, if I come over here and type in 4.18, you see the first one, which is an F for flow num, that comes out as a flow num. We have decimal places, but the second one is an integer, gets truncated, and then the last one is again a bang. All right, ninth patch. Um, I have a, a, a fixed value in the trigger of 20, and so if I click this, you see I get 20, and then the I and the F are zero by default. I can change them, but the 20 stays the same. Um, anyhow, and 
this one will take in a flow num, but it does get put out as an integer with this second one right here. And the last one is how to deal with the hot and cold outlet ones. I talked about this before. If I add a number right here, you know, this is a hot inlet, meaning if, I, if it gets input, it triggers an output, which is so what I got right here. But if I do that normally with the, uh, the add end here through the cold inlet, it doesn't do that. If you want to make it a hot inlet, what you can do is use a trigger object. I have this number feeding into a uh, trigger object where I say first output an integer value. So take that out of here and stick it into here. So we're going to change the number that gets added. And then, because we're going to the left, put out a bang into the first inlet, which forces the output here. So now I can do, you know, 15 right here. And now I get 15 plus 15 is 30. In any case, that's the end of the 20 objects lesson number two on the number box from Cycling 74. Thanks.